Hello, and welcome to another Open Frameworks audio programming tutorial. Today, we will be discussing delay. Delay is an important component of many, many audio processing units, such as flangers, pitch shifters, reverbs, EQ, etc. Today, we will be building a static C++ delay unit. We will be following the paradigm of Max MSP, where storage and access are separated into two separate objects. In this situation, we have a five second delay line and we are accessing that delay line 300 milliseconds into the past. Test, 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 test. All right, all right. So you can see it's not too complicated. We just, we have a input and then an output. Note that this cable does not carry any audio. This cable just tells tap out which buffer it's referencing. In C++, we'll be storing the audio in an array. Another goal we will have is to add recursion. So if we take the output, multiply the output by some scalar, we'll do 0 0.7, and then put that back into the input, we will have recursion. So every time it'll go through, it'll get repeated again, go through, be repeated again. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Okay, one limitation we will have with this unit is that this is a static delay line, not a variable delay line. Notice, I'll get rid of the rec recursion for the moment. Test. If I try to change, the, try delay, to change the delay, you get clicks, you get and, pops. clicks and pops. We will not be, we will tackling, not be that. Tackling, that, tackling that issue today. Okay, so when we move to C++, we'll have to decide how to store this audio. The easiest way to think about it, but it would be incorrect, is to have an array where zero, the array at zero is the newest point, and the array at the array's maximum is the oldest point. However, the issue with this is that every single time we add a sample, we have to shift every single sample one address to the, to the right. And that is incredibly inefficient. Even if there's only one second of audio at 48,000 samples per second, we have to move 48,032 bit floats every one 48,000th of a second. So it's incredibly inefficient. And uh, to fix this, we use what's called a circular buffer. A circular buffer, the array stays static, but the, the newest point moves as it moves along. This way, we only have to add one 32 bit float and uh, just adjust our writing index. All right, so open a new Open Frameworks project using the project generator. We will not need any add-ons today. And we'll start with our general housekeeping that we typically do. So add a exit loop. Audio in. Audio out. All right, and now we know from our last tutorial, we'll need to store our audio input into a buffer. So last time I believe we used a vector to do this. And we'll just call this input buffer. And while we're here, we might as well just determine our buffer size. All right, so in our setup loop, our Buffer size is going to be 512, or whatever you choose. We need to add our input. And our output function.
loop through the buffer. If you have any trouble with this, visit the previous tutorial. For every one of the samples, we'll put our input buffer at i equals buffer at i. So that will provide us with our audio samples. And we are done with this loop now. Business as usual here for int i equals zero. And then we'll need our output, which will be, we'll tell buffer at, let's see, i times number channels plus zero equals current sample buffer at i times number of channels Okay, so as of now, neither of these functions will start running until we start the audio thread. And that's always best done at the end of the setup loop. Stream setup. See, we will need uh, two inputs, one output. Let's do 48,000 samples per second. Four buffers. Oh, buffer size. Four buffers. Go ahead and give the program a run just to make sure everything's fine. And this will be basically our bl blank slate. Fantastic. Where do we fail? No, oh, we did. I neglected to add the exit loop. Great, it does nothing just like we planned. Okay. So back to our example in Max MSP, we first need a mechanism to record and store audio. We want to give this mechanism just a certain amount of time in milliseconds, just for consistency purpose. So let's do that the same way we did with the input bu buffer, vector of floats, which is just an array of floats. Um, let's call this delay line buffer and we'll need to store the size of this buffer we actually don't since we're using a vector but I eventually plan on not using vectors for this so let's call this delay line size All right, so we'll pick out a size before the program executes. Let's say we'll want 5,000 milliseconds. Multiply that by 0 0.001. And we'll multiply that by the sample rate. This will give us how many 32-bit uh, floats we will need to allocate in the vector. So if we take our delay line buffer, resize it by the delay line size. And just for fun, let's find out how exactly how many 32-bit floats this will take. C out delay line size. All right, looks like one, two, one, two. Is that right? One, two, three, 
One, two, two million four hundred thousand. Seems high. Seems pretty high. Yes, okay, so that's not the sample rate. This is the sample rate. All right, I'm glad we checked. <clears throat> Get rid of this line. All right, so now we need to store those samples. So we need to, since we're doing our circular buffer, we need to store a right point. This will be the point that moves, the, so an index where we're about to write to. So this will start on zero, and we'll set that in the setup loop. Write point equals zero. And then we need to, in the audio out function, set current sample equal to buffer, input buffer at i. So now we just have the real time input. And then our delay line buffer at our right point equals our current sample. And this will work until we get to the end. We need a mechanism for if we get to the end to go back to the beginning. So if right point is greater than input buffer si delay line size, I'll just copy that so I don't spell it wrong. Then right point equals zero, greater than or equal to. All right, so now if we ran the program, uh, it should, let's go ahead and try it out, shouldn't crash. It should just store that audio and keep storing audio, but we'll have no way of hearing it at the moment. We'll just hear the current live stream. Test, test, test. Okay, so that's essentially tap in. It just grabs the audio and automatically finds the location for where to put the new audio. Now we need essentially tap out. So at the moment we know which delay line buffer we're going to use. So really we just need a read point. So int read point and that'll tell the function where to check that array. So let's go back to the beginning here. This is the delay line size. So we need to set a read point. And we want to say how far in the past we want to look. We want that to be how we operate this. So read point equals zero, starting at the beginning, minus how many samples in the past we're looking. So we want to express this in milliseconds, so let's just do 500. Let's do 1,000. 800 sounds good. Great. 800 milliseconds in the, milliseconds in the past times 0 0.01 times 48,000. All right, so, and if we wrap this, there's one way we could do this is just to wrap it at delay line size, but I don't want, I prefer to, just do this. It works just as well. So if we take delay line size and do minus one. So this will put us near the end of our delay line and then it, we'll have to have a mechanism for it to recirculate anyway. So this works well for me. All right, so let's set tap, make a new sample called tap out sample and we'll set that equal to our delay line buffer, and we'll read the read point. And then we'll progress that read point, read point plus. We'll still need a safety mechanism for when we go to the end to go back to the beginning. All right, and now we just need to listen to our tap out. All right, I am back after having fixed a couple issues, or found rather. Uh, one issue we're having is that our audio thread was never actually running in this application, but it did not 
cause it to crash. So I had accidentally used 480,000 as the sample rate instead of 48,000, which is a concern. And now our audio thread will run and reveal my second mistake. All right, so if you're running this code, you probably have already, if you're following along, you probably got the same error. Yeah, there we are. Uh, bad access. We have not actually initiated the input buffer vector. So we need to add the line input buffer dot resize to our buffer size. And now we have our 512 samples of input ready. So we can run the program. And we should have our delay of 800 milliseconds. Test. Test. All right. We're well, getting some. All right. We're well, getting some crackly sounds. I'm going to blame that. I'm going on Soundflower at the moment. It does not happen when I'm not doing the tutorial. So. All right. So we have one more step before we're finished. We wanted to add recursion, so we take the output of our tap out. So it's our, our already delayed signal, and we plug that into tap in. Just like before, just like before, just like before. That's the only step. The only step. The only step. So go back to the code. So where we are adding our current sample, which is our live input to our delay line, we also need to add the output of our tap out. So we'll add tap out sample. We still need to scale this, otherwise it'll get very loud really fast, and you can actually hurt yourself in some systems. It gets pretty loud. So let's do 0 0.7 again. All right, so adding this bit of code was the exact same thing as adding this object. Let's give her a run. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 okay. test, test. Okay. So it started crackling at first and it smoothed out. And that, that happens in some of my applications. I'm not sure why yet. I have s suspicions it have something to do with starting the sound stream. But uh, that's it for to this part of the tutorial. Uh, in the next part, we're going to uh, put these objects into a cl or organize this into two classes, a tap in class and a tap out class. Uh, for convenience. It would be really hard to manage this code if you wanted to use tap outs more than once, if you wanted to use tap ins more than once. So this is the bare minimum we could have done, and the next tutorial will be making it clean and reusable. Thank you.